Right, you guys, if you go to my website, bbmposter.org, uh, you will see a few posts here, recent posts. Um, I don't know if it's going to be on the very top because I'm updating new posts all the time. So you might need to scroll it down here to find it, but um, you will find it here under recent post. And also I will have it under electronic circuits. If you go here, I'll have another post here under uh, BBM Pulsar 4B. There's going to be about another one, BBM Pulsar 5B. So you can find it here as well. But for now, you go to my recent posts and then the, the top one, 2.4 Tesla BBM Pulsar. And then you scroll it down here and go to download here. And this will open up a circuit for you. So welcome, welcome. <clears throat> Finally, I am uh, releasing the 2.4 Tesla automatic magnetic pulser model 5B with the power control for everybody. It's open source and here you go. Enjoy it. In this video, I'll go over uh, how this circuit works and different modules in this circuit and we'll talk about each one independently. All right, so first one, let's start with power and talk about talk about power. This circuit is 120 volt AC. As you can see here, it has neutral and hot, also, you will have your ground. Ground does not connect to the neutral. Please make sure ground does not connect to the neutral. Ground connects to the body of the pulsar metal casing and that's about it. It does not connect to the neutral. In this circuit, it's not being used here at all. We have <clears throat> 120 volt AC coming in through the fuse goes through the on off switch feeds 110 volt AC fan also it feeds 12 volt DC 1 amp power supply this power supply is used to feed power into the low voltage circuit as well as 7 segment LED indicator that's getting built into the south pole south side of the uh, coil Um, after the power is gonna go into the thermal switch this thermal switch is normally closed and see normally closed and it's set to trigger at 50 Celsius anytime internal temperature raises over 60 Celsius this thermal switch will trigger and cut all the power to the charging circuit here then power goes into the relay and this relay is also uh, controlled by 50 Celsius thermal switch that's built into the coil. Right next to the coil I install this uh, thermal switch and it senses the temperature of the coil anytime it raises about 65 degrees or so. Um, this thermal switch is 50 degree but it's slightly offset when it's installed in the coil and so it doesn't trigger at 50, it triggers at around 65. Actually, north side of the coil will, uh, the temperature of the no north side of the coil uh, on the surface will go all the way to 85 degrees Celsius before the switch triggers and shuts the coil off. Um, so the way it works is uh, anytime coil gets hot, this thermal switch will sense the temperature and um, will open the line. This is a normally closed switch as well and it will trigger and will uh, deactivate the power here. Um, I'm using common and normally open. After that power will go through the resistor. Uh, 
in this circuit I'm using 25 to 35 ohm resistor. This is 200 watt resistor. And um, and this is the resistor that air from the fan, from this fan, will be cooling it off. This is the only component that gets hot in this circuit. Power from the resistor will go into the charging circuit. This is the charging circuit right here. It consists out of six diodes and five capacitors. All the capacitors are 120 microfarad, 450 volts. All the diodes is RURG, 80, 100, they're 1 kilovolt, 80 amps. Um, this is a 900 volt charging circuit. This will allow you to charge your capacitor bank all the way to 920 volts um, between 900 to 950 volts on average 920 volts and um, you will use this energy stored in these capacitors to discharge it into the air core coil through the tire resistor here and this is the new tire resistor that's been used um, and I'm using America Semiconductor 50 RIA 100 tire resistor and from my experience it's um, working good I have tested it and it's not blowing and it's holding on to the all the power stored in the capacitors and all the power that needs to be released into the coil it's it's good and this is not expensive component you can get it for about $15 a piece all right we talk about new capacitor bank that has newer larger capacitors 3.3 thousand microfarad and they must be 500 volt previous capacitors were 350 volts and in this circuit you have to use 500 volts capacitors and connect them in series all right let's move on you also have uh, this line here this is a thermal protection feedback input into the low voltage circuit and um, with basically this is a monitoring uh, circuit right here it consists out of a few components so the way it works is we constantly are feeding AC through this 250k resistor and the circuit they consist out of one two three four uh, five six seven eight nine components this is a alarming circuit the way it works is it sees seeks constantly uh, hot 110 AC coming in through here anytime the AC is not coming in through here uh, this transistor will trigger and will activate blinking red LED and this LED has to be as is um, purchased with the built-in uh, circuitry inside uh, and anytime you apply power to this LED it will start blinking by itself it doesn't need the generator to start making blink so and that's the type of LED I'm using it here as a current limiting resistor and standby resistor to ensure that it's not um, trig it's not blinking uh, when this transistor is not triggered. So this is a, a circuit that is an alarming circuit right here. All right, let's move on to the the main components of this circuit which is the chip this is the generator that generates the pulses for the thyristor right here and um, it's set to put out three milliseconds pulses uh, what sets duration of the pulse is these two components here 82k resistor along with C3 33 nanofarad capacitor. These two components will set 3 millisecond pulse to, uh, 
come out from this chip anytime it gets triggered. It gets triggered through this circuit right here. This is a triggering circuit for the, for the chip. So, how it works. Um, pulse trigger capacitor feedback input. This is the line that will have a high voltage on it. And this line will have up to 950 volts when fully charged. Um, but because this pulser works in automatic mode and it won't allow it to charge to 950 volts, uh, this circuit will trigger before voltage reaches that high. It will trigger at maximum 800 volts. And um, this resistor here will allow you to set trigger voltage between 400 volts to 800 volts. Um, this is the new feature that I have added into the 5B because um, 2.4 Tesla in a single mode uh, not always convenient to use. Sometimes you would uh, need to use weaker power and here we go. This resistor will allow you to tune it down to 1.2 Tesla. This is a quarter watt small resistor. It doesn't need to be strong or anything. Uh, by the way, all the resistors except main resistors are quarter watt, including variable resistor. This one here. All right. So we're looking here at uh, this is basically a voltage divider. It consists out of three resistors. One, two, and three. <clears throat> Along here we have a Zener, which is which is a component that helps to trigger. Uh, anytime the voltage raises here to 30 volts, the Zener will allow the voltage above 30 volts to flow into this transistor and complete the line through the emitter, base to emitter. And anytime there's a current occurs here, uh, this line will get closed. So the power will start floating from uh, number two terminal uh, into the ground here through the transistor. This resistor keeps this input this is the trigger input, uh, reset actually, and it keeps it high uh, because uh, pin 8 and pin 4 are connected to here, to the 12 volt line. And through this resistor, I'm keeping it high here, uh, high voltage, and then anytime the voltage gets raised about 30 volts here, uh, this transistor will uh, bring this voltage from around 10 volts down to 1.2 volts and will trigger this circuit I mean trigger this uh, chip and anytime this chip is triggered um, it will read the set values here and it will output into pin number three pulse and this pulse is gonna go into two resistors and into the pulse LED. Well, this is a blue LED, it will blink, and also this pulse will go into the optocoupler. This optocoupler will trigger and it's getting its current through this current limiting resistor and it will feed output current, a pulse, into the thyristor here onto the gate and it will trigger this uh, thyristor before thyristor triggers it will have 900 volts on an anode and ground which I'm sorry uh, neutral uh, which is zero on a cathode and anytime you send voltage into the gate this will become a short and it will short anode to the cathode and all the energy that's being stored into the capacitors will get discharged into the coil thus producing magnetic pulse 
and discharging capacitor bank. All right. Let's look at let's look at some other components here that I didn't talk about. Uh, relays. I recommend using uh, this specific relay, or if you don't use this one, make sure your relay within 25 milliamp current. Otherwise, you're gonna have to adjust this resistor. Currently, this resistor is adjusted to the 25 milliamp current draw relays. Another thing, you guys, if you don't have this uh, seven-segment LED display, which, by the way, looks like this right here, this is the picture of it. You can simply uh, short it instead of a resistor here. Just just short it with a from here to here. Just put a short right here, and basically you can have thermal switch installed on the coil, but it will not have this LED indicator. And all you gotta do is connect from here to here. Is two points you need to short, and then you don't need this LED indicator, and everything's gonna work just fine. If you don't want um, thermal protection, which is this, and LED indicator, then all you gotta do is to short these terminals to here, right here. Just get them connected, this green wire to here, and cut everything up, cut it all off and your circuit will work just fine. This is just a couple tips for people who are uh, don't want to install this uh, LED indicator into the south pole, south side of the uh, coil. All right, about coil. Coil is the uh, same as in previous pulser. It's made out of 14 gauge copper wire has 15 layers, internal diameter is 1 inch, outside diameter is 3 inches, thickness 5.8, total weight of the coil is 400 gram. I do have videos where I uh, mold the coil and I will be making videos on how to twist the coil and build the coil itself and so just keep watching my YouTube videos and you will see. Alright you guys, this is it. Thank you for viewing my videos, thank you for stopping by, I appreciate you subscribing, liking and sharing this video. This is the open source circuit and if you uh, think that there is something you can upgrade, something you can modify, make it better, I'm willing to uh, review any updates you have please email them to me at ideas at bbmposter.org or you can email them to me at support support at bbmposter.org